take our Bibles today and turn to uh, Isaiah chapter 55, and we will be reading verse 11. Isaiah 55, 11. When you find that, if you'll stand. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. Israel's deliverer, divider of the sea, the conqueror of Jericho, Jehovah set them free. Some think of these as fables with no relevance today, but God's past power never passed away. For those 
those who tread a troubled road and feel they can't go on. There's a promise we can stand upon. A great stand in every test. For the great I am still is. I can lose it all and still be blessed. Yes, the great I am still is. I'm a sinner saved by grace because. The great I am still is. Oh, I'm not today what I once was. The great I am still is. The great I Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hobos and tramps, cross-eyed mosquitoes, and bow-legged ants. <laughs> wow. Do uh, you guys still need this music? Or? There you go. Now that, that's good church music right there. Glorifies the Lord Jesus. And uh, you like Larry's part? That was way down there. Good job, Larry. Amen. I'm going to preach a pretty simple message tonight. And some of you aren't soul winners. You haven't arrived yet. You haven't decided to go out yet. That's fine. I wasn't a soul winner for a long time. Uh, so, But you can listen and learn. And some of you that are soul winners and been soul winners for a long time, you might learn something. I experienced the same fear going out soul winning as anybody does. However, I've learned how to deal with that fear. And you'll find after, you know, it's like the first person you talk to. Uh, once you get the first person out of the way, then, then God just gives you, you know, it just takes the fear away and you just talk to anybody. It's like playing football. You guys know after the first hit, you're all jacked up. Before the, you know, then when you hit that first hit or you get hit, then everything's cool. Um, or the first jump out of an airplane. The first jump, oh my goodness. You're like, well, God, if I see you, if I don't, you know, if I see you in the next minute, okay, just know I love you. Uh, but once after your first jump, I mean, it's just, you know. And that's the way it is with soul winning a little bit. God takes, the, you just got to do it. And once you do it, it's fine. And our, our lack, I'm, I'm preaching on the subject confidence and so and having confidence of course all our confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. Um, but God gives you some confidence if you'll do some certain things or see some certain things I just got a verse from Craig he said read Psalm 73 it went right with the point one of my points in the message and I'll read it later um, but our lack of confidence in, in, t in telling someone how to get saved um it just comes, it's conjured up in our mind. Uh, it really is. Uh, who said it? 
Uh, I think it was uh, Jimmy Johnson of the Cowboys said, "The only thing we have, the only th uh, thing we have to fear is fear itself." Oh, maybe that was Franklin Delano Roosevelt, but that was a, after Pearl Harbor. I think he said that, and that is so true. The only thing we really have to fear is fear itself. It fear is conjured up. Oh, this person's going to say this. This person's going to slam the door. This person's going to make fun of me. This person, and that hard ninety nine percent point nine percent never happens. Uh, it's something that Satan does. It's something that we have conjured up mostly. Um, so confidence comes from knowledge. Somebody get me a gospel track, if you would, and just bring it up here, if you would. There's some back there, if you have some in your purse. Uh, it comes from not knowing what you're going to say. And I've said it many times. Remember in speech class in high school? Your worst fear? I hated speech class. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, you I was just so nervous. Uh, so I did a speech on fixing a flat tire, okay, and that was pretty easy. I hardly, the teacher said, you didn't say anything, uh, but you did show us how to fix a flat tire, so I think I got a C minus and passed. Uh, who hated speech class? Yeah, now, the only reason you hated speech class was the fact that you, if you're not prepared and you don't know what you're going to say, that's, that, that's all the fear. But if you, have, if you know exactly what you're going to say, you can get up. Now, you still be nervous, yeah, because you know, most people don't like getting in front of people and uh, talking. I hated it. I, was, I had a great fear of it. That's why it's crazy I'm a Baptist preacher. But once you know, if you know what you're going to say, that gives you all the confidence in the world. Thank you. I don't know this guy. <laughs> well, can I have all different kinds of our tracks? No, I'm just kidding. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. But here are some ideas and thoughts that will help us become confident in our wit witnessing and, you know, hopefully. Uh, and this is the most important thing we do, isn't it? Yeah. Telling somebody how to go to heaven when they die. And by the way, I always have a track with you. I feel naked without a track. I, 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 I don't know what I'm doing going up and saying so. But if I hand them the track, that's... That's something that they're going to look at and focus on instead of me. They're, and I can say what I'm prepared to say. That's part of it. Okay, this has got all the information they ever need. If they say, get away from me, they still have this. Okay, and this shows them everything you need. It, you know, just what gives you confidence if you know this on the back of the track? It's called Romans Road, the road to heaven. It's all in the book of Romans, okay? If you just memorize four verses, you can tell anybody how to get to heaven. And you'll have that confidence. Uh, I have only read, I've been doing it for 40-something years. I've just, you know, I have it memorized. And you can memorize these, take you, you know, two couple, two or three hours or a day or two or whatever. You memorize these verses, and that, that's what gives you confidence to talk to anybody because you know what you're going to say. If you don't know what you're going to say, that's the fear. Am I making sense? Remind yourself how much your salvation means to you. How big a deal is this salvation to you? If it's a big deal, you might want to let someone else know. Of course it's a big deal. It's something that, it's, it's your whole life. And so many folks that are saved are miserable, okay, because they have no real purpose in life. They're saved, they're going to heaven, but what's your purpose, man? Your purpose is to tell somebody else how to get saved. That's why God left you here instead of taking you to heaven after you were born again. That ought to give you purpose. Do you want your mom tormented forever? Do you want your friends at work tormented forever? Do you want your friends at school tormented, tortured forever? Do you or don't you? If you don't, you'll do something about it. 
petty fear that we have. I know it's strong. I have the same thing, and I still do at times. But if I know what I'm going to say, and I've known what I'm going to say for decades, that's why I can go up to anybody and ask them, hey, if you died today, are you sure you're going to go to heaven? And I can show them how. If they say, no, would you like to? And I, I, I got all the confidence in the world that the Holy Spirit will help me. But the Holy Spirit can help me a lot easier if I know what I'm going to say. And by the way, I shouldn't say this in this message, but even if you don't know anything, okay, and you bumble your way through everything, that's God can lead somebody to the Lord through you. And that's happened to me, and that's happened to many of you. But we, God also wants us to be prepared, okay, and he'll use a prepared vessel, and he'll do it and give you confidence. You can win your family to Christ. You can win anybody you, that God wants saved to Christ. Don't you want to be used? That's why this church is here, man. That's why we're doing this. You know, she's led people to the Lord in her cab. Uh, you've led people to work at work and at school, and you can do it. It doesn't matter where you're at. I was saved on an oil rig. I don't care where you're at, in the Army. Um, but you need the confidence, okay? These things will give you confidence. If, you, if, you, if, if salvation is a huge thing to you, then don't you want it to be to somebody else? It'll be difficult to be confident, let alone go soul winning, when you're not enjoying your own salvation. Amen. Come on. Right? Um, I'm tickled to death. I still am. Yeah, I, got, I mean, I have bad days, but it all comes down to thank you, Lord, that I'm saved, man. Amen. Why would you want to share salvation with others if you don't believe how fortunate you are to be saved yourself? I want others to experience my joy. I want, you know, I, 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 I just want others to experience what I've experienced. And the feeling and the knowledge that I know I'm going to be with Jesus someday forever. You can charge hell with a squirt gun if you know that. Um, to know I'll be walking with the Son of God on streets of gold. And exploring and finding out new universes that he never told us about. Whew. Wouldn't that be great? Amen. We'll go to a planet where the Dallas Cowboys actually win. Amen. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Number two, know the plan you're presenting. Know the plan you're presenting. Okay? Uh, know what you're going to say. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. Will you, do you know the way? Have you memorized the way? Jesus gives us a clear plan, the way in the Bible. He is the way. <clears throat> Number one, you're a sinner. That's why you need the way, Jesus. Number two, there's a price to pay. That's hell. The way will keep you out of hell. And number three, he already died for you. The way died for you. It's all about the way. But God committed his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And number four, you could be on your way. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you know the way? Okay, I do. I know the four things. You're a sinner. There's a price to pay. That's hell. Jesus already paid the price. And, and Romans 10, 13, that's how you get to heaven. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, call on him, he'll save you. You got to believe you're a sinner first. Okay, what are you getting saved from? Okay, you can't hurry up the thing. They got If they say, "Well, I don't know about if I'm a sinner or not," you, that's it. That's it. The guy the other day, I don't know about the. It was a lady, it's a Russian lady that was here with pink hair. She gave us all these crosses, right, Joseph? I gave my wife a brand new necklace with crosses she made. Uh, I think she threw it away. I don't. I don't know what she did with it. It was kind of weird stuff, but uh, she was very nice. But then it came to I tried to lead her to the Lord. She said. Uh, uh, she said, well, I don't know about, I said, you believe the Bible, don't you? You went to a good church after you came here from Russia. Oh, well, you know, there's just some thing. I said, well, we can't go any further. If you don't believe the word of God, because that's what saves you. Okay, the word of God, Jesus. Okay, um, we can't go any further. And she said she was already saved, and I don't know, but um, I forgot her name. I forgot her name. I was going to ask you to pray for her. Um, but once you know the Romans road, and know it, you won't 
ever have to think about the plan. You'll be able to adjust on the fly when certain things happen. If you know what you're going to say, there's going to be different. Satan's going to fight you. I had, I mean, this is no, I had a chandelier fall from a roof right in the middle of a coffee table one time. Oh, yeah. Right in the middle of a coffee table. All kinds of things happen. Okay, Satan does not want you to go, or whoever you're talking to, to go to heaven. He wants you to go to hell and the person you're talking to. He wants everybody to go to hell with him. So the more you know the plan, anything can happen, you go right back. Okay, you know you're a sinner. The Bible says you're a sinner for all have sinned. Everybody, me, you, and everybody. And the second thing you do, pow, 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 something happens. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Okay. Well, we took care of that. Okay, let's go back to number two. Are you ready? Okay. Now that you put your hair out because it was on fire, all right, or whatever happened, uh, you get my drift? Once you know the plan, man, you were set, okay? And that gives you confidence if you know what you're going to say. I don't care what happens. Oftentimes, soul winners will give the person the gospel but fail to have the confidence to win them to Christ. Draw the net. There's so many of these uh, one example I know is, uh, what's that guy, Kirk Cameron with Jesus, the walk with Jesus, what's it called? Uh, who cares? I, I don't know. God bless him. But you, if you follow those guys, if you watch them, they never draw the net. They don't know how to draw the net. Okay? Okay, are you ready to be saved? Would you, you're not ashamed of Jesus, are you? Okay, you're a sinner. There's a price to pay. Jesus already paid the price. Romans 5, 8. Now, you believe all that, you want to get saved. They... People, people don't draw the net, man. You get them hooked, reel them in. Do you want to get saved? Or you're not ashamed. Yeah, put your hand on the Bible, okay? I'm going to lead you in a prayer, but you're not praying to me. Jesus knows. He, he, he made your heart. He knows exactly if you mean it or not. Do you want to ask him to save you, yes or no? Is that too hard? No. No, I know it is hard for a lot of people because I've been doing it for so long, and some of you have to, and I'm not making it sound like it's not, you know, hard at times. It is. But if you know what you're going to say, man, that's, that's 99% of the battle right there. Um, so, number three, know your approach. Know your approach. And, that, and practice what you're going to say to an individual when you approach them. I already know what I'm going to say. Hi, I'm Pastor Bell from Texas Baptist Church. We're just out inviting folks to come to church. Here's an invitation. That's my two dogs and my beautiful wife. That's Wookie and that's Gary. I'll say something funny about the dogs, okay? Or I'll, you know, just break guys, give them a smile or get them, you know, let them know that uh, I'm half crazy or whatever, you know. Uh, just that I'm not super spiritual or anything and hand the track then. Okay, I know what I'm going to, I know what I'm going to say. Okay, so that's, that's a big part of it, the approach. What do I do when they open the door? Hi, I'm Jorge. I'm Jorge, okay, from Tejas Baptista Iglesia. And I want to give you that, right? Right, Juan? Okay. You guys had a good day today in those other churches. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hard work. Hard work, man. Juan's out there at night and later on. He, he works hard, and all you guys do. I appreciate it. And this is what we're talking about. This is why, this is why we're out there. Um, you know, I'm Juan from Texas Baptist Church. I'm Fred. From Texas. That's, that's your approach, man. Don't make it too difficult. Uh, i got to hurry along. Number four, be walking close to the, uh, to the one you're telling people about. Come on. You want to win somebody to Christ? Be sure you're close to Christ. You want him to use you in a powerful way? Be close to him because he's the one doing it, not you. I don't care what your personality is. I don't care if you're, you know, you, you know everything and this and that, and you, you know all this stuff, and you can answer about the dinosaurs and all this stuff. I don't care. You're not going to save nobody. You're just a sinner. I'm just a sinner. The Holy Spirit of God's going to do the saving. Be close to God. These things I command you that you love one another. <clears throat> Believe, and that was the wrong verse, but anyway, we'll go on. Believe in your purpose. That's my fault. I gave you the wrong verse. Believe in your purpose. Got it? Do you believe in your purpose? Although, uh, if you don't believe, 
there's a hell. You don't believe in your purpose if you're not at least putting tracks in places, giving people tracks. If you're not doing that, don't tell me you believe in anything. I don't, don't tell me you're, 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 you're afraid and you're not cut to do it. Little Larry can put a track in a gas pump. Come on. It doesn't take a rocket science. It's not I'm saying you're dumb, Larry. I'm just saying you're little, okay? He don't, he don't really know what's going on. He will. He knows Jesus loves him. Amen. He asked Jesus to save him, by the way. Amen. But he can, he can leave a track. He doesn't have to know anything. You don't have to know anything. Give the gospel out at least. Know your approach. Know, be close to the Lord. Soul winning is simply introducing someone to our Lord. And you got to love people, man. You love people or you just love yourself? If you love yourself, stay home. Let the world die and go to hell. We know him well and are close to him. That will give us the confidence of presenting him to others. You can't present somebody you don't know. Hello? You can't present Jesus if you're not close, if you don't know him. How are you going to present to him? You're just going to be like a robot, like a machine. You're a sinner. There's a price to pay. Jesus paid the price. Bow your head now. <clears throat> be close to the one that you're presenting. It will help you out. It really will. Know what your purpose is. If your purpose is to let someone know how they can personally go to heaven and not burn forever in hell, then that'll stop some of your fears and give you some confidence. Purpose does away with a lack of confidence and a lot of your fears. If you know your purpose and come hell or high water, you have a purpose and you're going to get it done. Or at least you're going to try to get it done. Right? But I always use the football as a quarterback. Okay? If I go up to the line and we call the play and they're in a different defense that 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 is set to stop the play we call. If I don't know the defense, okay, then I'm just going to run the play and not call a different play away from what they got. You understand what I'm saying? If I don't know, if I don't have knowledge of what's going on, it's not going to turn out right. If I don't have knowledge of my Savior, how am I going to present him? <clears throat> but if I know the defense, okay, if I no, have knowledge of what's going on, then I can call another play, okay? And it's most likely going to work. But you've got to have the knowledge of who you're presenting, what's going on. It helps a lot. Uh, real quick, here are some. Uh, oh, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. That should be your purpose. Amen. That was his purpose. Amen? Okay. He's saying Amen. Amen. Tips to give more confidence. Wow, that's a, a, a great marquee there, John. Amen. Here's some tips real quick, and then we'll, we'll go eat some uh, Chinese food. You ready? Amen. Memorize the Romans Road. I don't know how many times I've, a lot of, and some have and some haven't. You're a sinner. There's a price to pay. Jesus paid the price. Ask Jesus to save you. How hard is that? Memorize. Um, well, first, uh, first John 5.13 is what I remember. Okay? That tells people that you can know for sure you're going to go to heaven. These things I've written to you that you may know that those that believe in the Lord Jesus you may know that heaven's your home. Okay? Uh, you know for sure you have eternal life. A lot of people don't think they can know for sure. Well, give them first John 5.13. Okay? Uh, these things, if that comes up. Well, I don't know if we, anybody can really know. Has that ever come up? Sure. Well, take them to first. Don't just memorize. Okay, then memorize. The first thing they need, okay, they say, okay, I'd like to know how to go to heaven. First thing you need to know, you can read the track. You don't have to, you know, even if you don't, if you refuse to memorize it, just read it to them. The Word of God. If you read the Word of God, God's something, something going to happen. It's just not going to come back void. You're a sinner, man, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Number two, Jesus, or there's a price to pay. For whoever's name's not written in the book of life will be cast in the lake of fire. Those are two verses right there. You're a sinner. There's a price to pay for being a sinner. The third thing is you need to know Jesus already paid the price. You don't have to worry about going to church and trying to be good. Jesus already paid the price for your sin. He paid for all your sin. 
That doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven, but Jesus paid the price. You don't have to pay. Romans 5, 8, but God committed his love towards us. That's three verses you've got to memorize. And that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. The Bible says Christ died for you. Believe it or not. If you don't believe it, you're going to go to hell. If you don't, you're going to, if you do, you're going to go to heaven. I don't say it like that. Maybe it's some Jehovah false witness. Uh-uh. Anyway. And then this sit, draw it in, Romans 10, 13. Well, okay, you believe you're a sinner. You believe there's a price to pay. You believe Jesus already paid the price. Romans 10, 13. Here's how you go to heaven. Whosoever shall call upon the, you're whosoever, aren't you? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and stop smoking shall be saved. No, that's not what it says. Okay. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be. God can't lie. Shall be. Now, do you want to get saved? Do you want to be sure? Okay. Okay. Which you're not ashamed of Jesus, are you? And most people aren't. They're going to bow their head and they're going to follow you in a prayer. If you want them to pray themselves, then do it. I always help them in the prayer. But I make sure they know what they're doing. They're not praying to me. Not one, two, three. Pray after me, and you're going to go to heaven. You've got to mean it, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And later on, you'll learn those verses, and you'll tell them, look, uh, God's looking at your heart, whether you believe or not. It's all whether you believe. Okay. Um, Memorize the road. Use three by five cards. Use your phone. I use my phone now. Write down people's addresses. I don't, I don't even have, once you know it, you don't need to have it written down anymore. You have it in your hands. It's written down for you, you know, to give out. Um, but highlight those verses in your, in your New Testament. Uh, you know, Romans 3, 23, Romans 5, 8. Uh, you know, all the verses I just told you. Uh, here's the, probably the most important thing. Pray. You get it in God's hands. Ask God to give you the confidence you need. When you rely on the Holy Spirit, then you will receive the power and confidence you need. Don't rely on your personality. Some of you don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> or your gift of gab. Okay? Don't rely on anything. Um, just remember, God wants your attention God wants their, your attention and their attention, so give it to them. Give, give them your knowledge. Give them what you have, uh, but you've got to pray. The key is touching the prospect's heart by the Holy Spirit of God, not by your personality. So have you prayed? Do you pray Okay, for power? And that's the key. Okay? You have not because you ask not. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Boy, I don't know about you, but that gives us confidence. That will give me confidence, okay, and it does. Um, so pray. The key to touching the prosperous hearts is to allow the Holy Spirit to work while you're working. Call on him to work on the folks you're talking to. I don't ever remember a time I haven't asked the Holy Spirit to help me. Maybe when I first started doing it, I was so nervous or whatever. But it's all about him. You get him involved, there's no telling what's going to happen. You try to do it on your own, and, you know, he, he can use you too. I mean, he's going to do what he wants to do. He's God. All right, but don't be a Calvinist and say, well, he's going to do what he's going to do. I'll just sit home. He wouldn't have told us to preach the gospel, go out and go, the world and preach the gospel to every creature then, would he? Hello? Uh, yeah. That's what he told us. Trust your Savior. And Jesus came and spake unto him, saying, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Who's in charge of that little conversation? Him. He has all the power to do whatever he wants to do, and he'll do it. If you'll just trust him and know that he has. Never feel like we're really soul warning, not soul winning. Yeah. We don't win anybody. He does, of course. We know that. Okay? So really what we're doing, the Bible's, the only reason we call it soul winning is because the Bible says, you know, he that won his souls is wise. But really, if you think about it, we're just warning people. We're just warning. Um, never feel like a failure as a soul winner if you present the gospel because 
That is all you're asked to do is just to give the gospel. You're not asked to win anybody. He does the winning. Your job is to cast the net. And he will, put, he, will, he will make the fish go on the right side of the boat if he wants to. And whoever you're talking to will be caught. Capiche? Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay. Uh, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. <clears throat> Who haven't you not talked to? Is, are there blood going to be required? Is there blood on your hand? I don't know. Okay? I don't want to take a chance. That's what the Bible says. I don't want to take a chance of me being responsible for anybody going to hell. Okay? Um, and I don't think you will be, but you're responsible for not obeying the commandment of God. So God wants to make sure you know that. Hey, if you've got a chance to present the gospel to somebody, you better know what you're doing and do it right. And put some effort into it. You're saved. You're going to heaven. You got it made. Remember, you lead them to the Lord, but Jesus does the saving. Never feel like a feather is a soul winner when you present the gospel because that's all you are asked to do. Present it. But learn, that's what we're talking about tonight. Present it, man. Present it right. There's a way to do it. Know what you're talking about. No, there's four simple uh, verses. Man, if you can't memorize four verses, come on, okay? This thing's real. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Do not worry about making mistakes. Try to be unselfish. It's all about Jesus. Don't worry about what they're saying to you or what they did to you or what they said about you or the door they slammed in your face and this and that. I know it gets you upset. It gets me upset. I mean, you know, like these mor morons and these Jehovah false witnesses, man, it just makes my blood boil. Well, you know, really, that's pride. It's just because, you know, they're, they're, I, I'm at the point in my life where it's just, I love the Lord and I, I want I want them to know the truth. I don't know how to say it. I know the truth, man, and I, Jesus is the answer. You can't tell me anything else. Amen. And when you're trying to tell me something else, it just makes me kind of upset. Because I know how much he put it. He gave his life for it. And you out here, you little devils out here knocking on doors telling people different. No, no, that don't, that don't fly with me. Okay? Uh, but... God can take a mistake. Don't, don't be un, unselfish and just, this is not a personality contest. This is not a social gospel we're presenting. We are commanded to do this. This is the most important thing you'll ever do in your life. You are there. We are there to present a simple plan of salvation to those who are headed for hell. That's it. A simple plan. We have, gave it, we have given it to you. It's a simple plan. And a box of these costs a lot of money. Amen? I'm not saying you leave them everywhere you want, where God tells you to leave them. Okay? But it's very simple. It's on a card. And you can tell anybody about it. You, all you got to do is memorize it. Always remember to leave the door open for the next soul winner if you hit a brick wall. Tony. <laughs> do not force the gospel on anyone. You might be planting a seed for the next soul winner. I'm guilty. We're all guilty. Some soul winners. I've been doing it for a while. <clears throat> well, that's all right. If you don't want to hear it, hell needs more firewood. <laughs> have, a nice, have a nice swim in the lake of fire, lady. God bless you. I hope you come to church. I'll be praying for you. <laughs> don't force the gospel on anyone, anyone either, okay? Um, we're not here for statistics or anything like that. Amen. It's nice. We had somebody baptized from every, every service. That's awesome, man. Amen. Good job. Good job. Those, those are real people with real souls and real families that love them. Amen. Did they all mean it? That's not my job to know if they meant it or not. Right. My job, remember, is just to present it. 
My job is just to present it. Yeah. And that's your job. Try not to stand there and argue doctrine with people. 99% of the time when I have done that, I did it because I wanted to appear smarter than the person I was. I was yeah. arguing with. It had nothing to do with caring for their soul. The closer you are to Jesus, the less you'll care about what happens to you, what's said to you, and the more you'll care about their soul. Because he cares about their soul. You can't. It's, I can't care about other people like he can. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you will. Do not, and do not be intimidated. When the truth is on your side, you have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. And I know it's easier said than done. Um, truth is always greater than error. Um, so when you can close your doors, uh, well, put that up here too. The Lord is on my side. Why? Why? Well, uh, I will not fear what man can do unto me. No, uh-uh. The Lord is on my side, not the Mormon side. They don't even believe Jesus is God. He's some great teacher. They're little devils is what they are. Little devils that have been duped by a false preacher. They have souls of their own. They're not little devils, but man, when you preach a false gospel, you better be, ooh. It's terrible. They're sending people to hell, man. Or Jehovah false witness. They're out there by the thousands sending people to hell. That ought to get your blood up, man. That ought to get you to memorize, say, no, no. If, they, if, they're, if they're out there by the thousands and hundreds of thousands giving the false gospel, why can't I give the real gospel? Amen. Don't talk bad about The only reason I can talk bad about them little devils is because I present the gospel. I present the real gospel. I don't want you out there presenting a the false gospel. Amen. Rely on the Holy Spirit. If you, if you do not rely on God while you're out there, then you're wasting your time. The power of God is, is you know, behind you. You have nothing to fear. Okay? The guy who built this fence who's in prison now, led him to the Lord. He was a bandito or trying to be or whatever. Remember Baron? <clears throat> when you have the truth, you have something that will not be intimidated by anything. Hell trembles from the truth. It was a big dude. I presented the gospel to him downtown. Uh, he was working on a job, building a fire escape up on a building, welding. I said, hey, can I talk to you? Brother? Yeah, what do you want? Long hair, big old dude. And you saw just the Holy Spirit melted his heart. Started bawling, crying, got saved, come here. He was my bodyguard for years until he went home and shot some guy in the chest, went to prison for murder. Anyway, that's my convert. <laughs> well, the, there's, uh, there's more to the story than hey, he's going to heaven. His uh, brother-in-law, I don't know if you remember, he was tattooed all over the face and everything. He got saved and baptized here too. So he stole from him, just don't get a drug, a drug habit. He's walking down Nacogdoches Road carrying Barron's 50-inch TV. And Baron saw him at 2.30 in the morning, pulled out a 40 millimeter, walked across the Nacogdoches Road down there by my house, put three holes in his chest. So he's serving 20 years. But the point I was getting to, I have no idea. But anyway, don't, don't be intimidated by people. You've got God on your side. You see how it turned out for him? You're not, you know, he went to prison. I know that. That's his life. But he got saved. And he's in prison. We're writing each other. He's... Uh, you know, he's playing in a Christian rock band, but he's excited about serving the Lord. He still is, and he's, that's all he talks about. He, he gives me scripture all through his messages and everything. Uh, rely on the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm done. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Well, I'm not going to remember things. Let God just put in your mind what you're going to say. He does the saving, right? Try not to worry about what they think of you. Who cares what they think of you? I know it's hard not to think. Be right with the Lord. 
If you're going to go soul winning, the most important thing is to be right with the Lord. If you know things are right between you and your Savior, you can have great confidence that God will bless your effort. Amen. We're told before we take, you know, the Lord's Supper, make sure there's nothing between you and the Lord. Well, the same thing is true when you're, when you're presenting the gospel. This is a verse I got from reading Psalm 73. But it is a good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Amen. Are you close? Are you been trusting him? Have you, have you been walking close to him? That will give you the confidence to declare all, everything. The Holy Spirit will always have a tough time flowing through someone, okay, who has a bad spirit and has not been walking close to God. I'm not saying God can't do it, uh, but it makes it harder. Whether you see God working or not does not mean he's not working on the heart of the person you're talking to. The Word of God does it, okay? And it will not come back void, and you can't, and you'll see it sometimes. People start crying, this or that, or they'll start, hey, honey, come over and listen to this, or whatever happens. Okay, the Word of God's going to do that, not you. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the time whereto I send it. God's, whatever's going to happen is going to happen if it pleases God. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen because he wants it to happen. They don't get saved right there. It's gonna, they're not going to get saved because he wants it to happen. If they're going to get saved because he wants it to happen. God's in charge. You just present it. You cannot fail when you give out God's word. That alone ought to give us great confidence, like the whipping Texas put on Oklahoma yesterday. <laughs> Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, thank you for... 